بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Tariq Khalid I'd like to open to our program here at Charter Media Corporation doing good and we hope that by Allah's mercy and grace that all of you who are seeing this program today that the believers are blessed by Allah's grace and mercy and those of you that still striving that Allah will guide you to that which is good for you in this life and more importantly good in the hereafter and we want to start by reading uh, from the second chapter of the Quran. Uh, this is verses 1 to 5. It's from Surah Baqarah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And Allah is talking about this book, the Quran itself. This is the book, I promise you that in it is sure guidance with no doubts for those who have reverence for Allah, for God, who believes in the unseen, who are steadfast in prayer who give to others out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in the revelation sent both to you, meaning to the Prophet Muhammad and that sent before your time, and who have firm confidence in the hereafter. They are being guided by their Lord, and it is these who will prosper. So let's look at some of the things that Allah says here, because in the end, Allah says what? It is these who will prosper. These people who do these things, and these are the good acts. The people who do these things, that they are the ones who will prosper. And Allah promises by, by the Quran that is, this is a sure guidance. And he says, no doubt, there's no doubt that this is a sure guidance. Why? Because this is the last revelation sent to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as revelations were sent to prophets before, to Jesus and Moses and uh, David. If we understand that, if we believe in these things, then uh, we can understand the consistency in the prophecy for those people who believe in the prophets. Now, many people say, well, you know, I don't know about the prophets, so, you know, tell me about them. So we're saying that we need to understand something, that divine revelation was handed down by Allah to the prophets of different ages to guide people to the correct path. What is the correct path? To worship God, one only God, only in the way that he's prescribed to worship him, meaning to do the things what he has said do and not do things what he has said not to do. And what does Allah promise you? A promise is promised you, as you'll see, for the people who do good, Allah has promised them benefit in this, in this life and more importantly, success in the hereafter. So, and Allah says, for those who have reference of God, meaning those who believe, those who submit. Now we have a lot of people today, and it's historical, it's not new, who say, well, I don't believe. I believe in myself, or I believe in something else than the one and only God. I believe in this idol. <laughs> I believe in this man. I believe in this mountain. I believe in the sun, the stars, the moon. As an example, we have people with various belief systems and believing in the power in those objects. But we're saying that those objects, what? All a creation of the one and only God. And they are not to be worshiped, but you're only supposed to worship the one and only God. And the true success is in this. And this is the message for all of mankind until the day of judgment, for men and jinn until the day of judgment, for those who what? Choose to listen. It says here, who believe in the unseen? Meaning, some people say, well, I can't believe in a God that I can't see. I said, well, every day you're living off something that you cannot see. You cannot live without oxygen. You can't see it. But you know that without it, you will die. For example, this is a simple example. We know we cannot, cannot live without it. So if we're talking about this, what are we saying? We, by Allah's mercy, we can see the galaxy and the beyond, okay? But how does it work? It is by, again, Allah's unseen power. Now somebody says, oh, well, there's scientific conclusions that people have come. And I said, sure, there are scientific conclusions, but of course, this is all man-made and it's limited. If you look at the universe and beyond, it is very clear that this is far beyond the capability of any man. If we look at this earth, 
We know this is far, we can see. And today with modern technology, we are aware and conscious of the, the kinds of things that men can do. We can see their limitations. So how is it that all of these things as intricate as your eye, for example, or your ear, or your fingertips, that it just happened, it just always was, it just came into being of its own accord. How is that relative to the life that we live? Can anything that we know just appear out of nothing on its own? No, we know that that's not realistic. Anything that we develop as humans has to come from something and has to be worked to develop. It has to be a process. So why is it that we can think that all that is created, that we're, and that, that's just what we're aware of, just happened per chance? How is it possible? Think about it. So Allah is questioning the people who believe in unseen. He said, well, I only believe in the here and now. I can only see, I can only believe what I can hear, see, touch, or taste. He says, well, again, think about oxygen. If you don't believe it, then be in a situation where you can't get oxygen. Ask someone who's asthmatic. Okay, ask them how do they feel when they can't breathe. And Allah says here, who are steadfast in prayer, who give to others out of what we have provided for them, who pray regularly, meaning that I submit myself to the fact that I know that I have to pray to my creator, that he has created me for his worship. And it is my duty and responsibility to pray to him. And in this, he doesn't have to. But he grants me much in this world and he promised me the paradise and the hereafter. He doesn't have to. Allah can just command us like robots and given us no choice. No, but he's given us free choice. And he's given those people who curse him, he's given them free choice. And the people who denounce him, he's given them free choice, isn't it? And there are many, there are tens of thousands, millions of people who died like this, unfortunately. You need to ask yourself this question. Do you wish to be among them? the godless people, the people who don't <laughs> appreciate God, who say, well, God is good under all circumstances, knowing that in life we have many experiences, many difficulties, many challenges. But the people who believe in the one and only God know that God is the one who makes these things easy and that he is aware and conscious of what it is that we're facing, what we're enduring. And that if we're patient and we continue to him, that ultimately we'll get the success from this. And the things that we're suffering in this world are limited. The suffering is only limited. I can only live a certain period of time. It is limited. And the law says more or less that he will not place a burden on the believer which he cannot bear. So we know that it's just a matter of time, that whatever I'm enduring here, at one point in time, it won't last, even if I leave this life. But if this is a test for me, then I must endure it with patience and prayer. And I must believe in Allah and believe that Allah is aware and conscious of what's happening to me and that it will be a means for forgiveness of my sins and a benefit for me after my death. And Allah mentions those who are thankful for what he has given them and they use this to provide for others. They realize that whatever we have received in this life is a trust. And of course, these are the people who are wealthy. And wealth is not based on economics only. We need to understand that. One of the, the most beneficial substances that we have is knowledge. And knowledge can be turned into wealth of different, many different facets of wealth. So the person who Allah has blessed, let's just take this as an example, with knowledge and he uses this knowledge to benefit others, number one. He uses this knowledge to help others help themselves. Of course, we see that this person is a distinguished personality. He may not have money at all, but Allah has blessed him with knowledge in a particular area that is very valuable to the society. So he works within this capacity to communicate with people so that they can benefit from this knowledge. Another person, Allah has given him wealth. And he realizes that this wealth is a trust. It is not his to use only for himself, but that it is a trust of how he will use it, that others will get benefit from it. So he takes this wealth with the consciousness and awareness that 
Giving does not take away from what Allah has given him. But when he gives for the pleasure of Allah, then Allah gives him a blessing in this. And that in many instances, and there are many examples of people where Allah actually, when they gave with the intention of serving Allah, that Allah gave them more wealth. So if we think from this perspective as think, oh, well, this is mine, you know, if I give this to you, I won't have any. Then we need to change this concept and understand this and be ready, willing, and able to give of ourselves for the sake of humanity and for the progress of humanity in which way? The progress of humanity towards the understanding and the submission and implementation to worship the one only God in the way that he's prescribed. And to leave uh, false worship. Yes, we have people who are worshiping all kinds of things today. And even in societies which we think are, mer or are very educated or developed societies, you find very surprisingly people worshiping some very strange objects and of a very strange mentality. Now, people say, what do you mean strange? What I'm saying is that because it's strange in relationship to the culture, that historically, for example, if you take a Christian culture or a Jewish culture, and then you find somebody within that culture who's worshiping an idol, this is clearly in opposition to what uh, these people have been taught uh, historically. It is definitely in conflict with what is common in the society. But we find this today. And as a result of the kind of liberal mentality that we have today, we say, well, just leave him, you know, each to his own. He's choosing to follow this path. And maybe one day he will choose guidance. But maybe one day he will not. Maybe he will continue, for example, let's look at this. That's like, it's like taking someone who says, well, you know, if there's freedom of religion, you know, you shouldn't assault that person. This is his choice. Yes, it is his choice. But let me ask you a question. If someone in your family gets introduced to drugs or alcohol and you see him traveling down a path that's going to lead to a very deep hole, would you not sit with him or try to get someone to sit with him to encourage him to the correct path? Or will you just let him go and say, well, you know, he's, this is his life. Let him live it as he wants. Uh, he'll wake up to it one day and he'll realize his mistake. Don't you think that this is rather foolish? very limited mindset? Would you think it is good to be proactive about this, to warn this person, say, listen, man, let me bring you someone here from Alcoholics Anonymous. You see an example. <laughs> and let him talk to you because he's been down this road and he's going to tell you, you're going to wind up in a deep pit which you might never come out of. But ask a question. But why is it that we have this liberal kind of mentality with people when we see them go into disbelief, we say, oh, well, you know, that guy, he's doing his thing. May Allah guide him. And we leave him. So what do we do? We have left him to Satan. Exactly. We've left, we have not given him any recourse. And I don't mean leaving him in the sense that we just don't talk to him anymore. I'm not saying that. We don't have to always talk to him about what he's doing, but we should be a reminder of the opposite of that when he sees what we're doing. When he sees you, you're a believer, you're obeying the commandments of Allah SWT, you're praying five times a day, you're going to the masjid, you're going to lectures, you're reading the Quran, you're doing good in your community, you're trying to be an upright citizen where you're living. This in itself becomes an invitation. The verbal invitation is one thing, but the practical example is the strongest invitation to people who are being misguided. And this invitation we should continue because what is, it is part of our own individual self-development. And then Allah says, uh, and who believe in the revelation sent both to you, and Allah's talking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that sent before your time, and who have firm confidence in the hereafter. They are being guided by their Lord and it is these who prosper. So we believe in all the revelation that came before, the revelation that came to the prophets of old. And we believe in all the prophets equally. And we believe that it, 
ultimately that Islam is the conclusion of this prophecy. And of course, ultimately we believe that there is a hereafter, that everyone who has been created will have to answer and account for his deeds and actions. And the person who's successful will get to paradise. So we'll ask you out there, what path are you on? And personally, I meet many people who are on different paths. But I ask you this question, what path are you on? And you need to ask that for yourself. You need to see where you are presently uh, and to make sure that you're not being misguided, that <laughs> you're not following a path that's going to take you to destruction. And oftentimes we can't see it because in, in modern society, and when I say I mean today's society, there are so many options. We have so many choices that seem progressive, beneficial, successful, and <laughs> every single day you will see, if you look at the internet, somebody who has this success story. And that success generally is based on some material success. And I don't necessarily mean that only because many people have great stories. And you will see them. Their, their lives were, they were, in, uh, they were extremely distraught in very difficult situations. And by Allah's mercy, they progressed out of that situation and became progressive in a material sense. And of course, it's not only materially, because in terms of their own self-concept and ideology, they move forward in their life. There's no question about that. And many of them uh, have come to the point where they've uh, become motivators of others. And this is what they do for a living now, that they encourage other people to do as they did, that they were in the deep pit and they came out of that pit and they're moving forward by Allah's permission and guidance. The question is, ask yourself, where are you now? And where it is that you want to go? And striving to do righteous deeds and actions is the first step. Doing good under whatever circumstance it is that you might find yourself and in this, begin to open the doors to the proper worship and understanding of who is your Lord in the way that he wants you to worship him. My name is Tara Khalid. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Charger Media Corporation. We're doing good, and we hope that everyone out there is striving to do the best that they can every day. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.